Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We are out here with Arwen today, and I know she looks like a chubby monkey. She just ate, so she's kind of fluffy. <laughs> and she's fluffy because it's winter, but she's a chubby monkey. Hi, baby. I know. And it's Shadow Facts. Anyway, somebody had asked me, hi, sweet pea. Somebody had asked me if I could make videos about Arwen that are kind of like the ones we did about Shadow Facts. You know, a little bit about goats and stuff like that. And sure, uh, we can. Not a problem. Um, first, I just want to say she's our fourth goat. So while Shadowfax is our first horse, our first mini horse, um, Arwen is actually our fourth goat. So we had Gandalf, who was really tiny. He was a pygmy, a little gray pygmy. Hi, sweetie. I know. I love you, too. Yeah, I know. So we had Gandalf, who was a little gray pygmy. Um, he was born with congestive heart failure. So we took him in as a rescue, and we kind of knew he wasn't going to live long. He lived a couple years, but congestive heart failure in a baby. Stop biting me. It's not funny. I mean, you're not doing it hard, but it's not funny. Anyway, <laughs> so Gandalf didn't live super long, just a couple years. We knew that when we took him in as a rescue. Pick those ears up. Pick those ears up. Thank you. Cat. Anyway, so that was our first, and he didn't live very long, and that was tragic, but we actually did know that would happen. Then there was Lily, who has been in some of my videos. She was very, very old and passed away this, uh, just a couple months ago, really. And there were Arwen, uh, Lily's two daughters, Sadie, who you have not seen on video, and Arwen here. Stop it. I tell you to stop so you get irritated. Stop being annoying. You are not the center of the world. I know that's hard to hear. Anyway, <laughs> so we had Sadie and Arwen. Sadie is still with my best friend. We sold her to my best friend. What are you doing? <laughs> but Sadie um, still lives with my best friend and we have Arwen. So those were our four goats that we've had. So let's talk about a little bit about goats in general. All right, so I had to follow Arwen into the barn, mostly because she wanted to come in the barn. And I didn't really want to follow her into the barn, but what the heck am I supposed to do about that? Nothing. So here we are in the barn. <laughs> so anyway, those are our four goats. So a little bit about goats in general. Let's start with a basic history of goats. Um, goats were one of the first livestock we ever domesticated. They've been domesticated for over 10,000 years. They provided milk, meat, fiber, and they make really cute pets, frankly. Is there anything cuter than that little face? I know, there's not, she's, someone's going to say, is she bloated? No. <laughs> no, she just ate a lot. That's a grass belly. Just a grass belly. She'll look a little smaller later. <laughs> um, they can clear brush and pastures by eating weeds and brush. Um, larger breeds can pull carts and can even serve as pack animals. They're not expensive to keep or maintain and require only a small plot of land. Not like a city plot of land. Uh, they do require a little more space than that, but they don't require nearly as much as most other livestock. They don't need as much, so big yawn. They don't need as much space as pigs. They don't need... Hi, sweetie. I got pet you now. Yeah, they don't need as much space as pigs. They don't need as much space as sheep or horses or anything like that. Yeah, you're a nice fluffy goat. So they're really good for a small homestead. They're multi-purpose and they're easy to keep. And I mean, she is a fainting goat, purebred fainting goat. So she's not that big. She won't get any bigger. This is how big she is. Okay, this is how big. I'm not very tall and she only comes up to my knee. Hi, Shadow Facts. So she's not very big. Some of them do get quite a bit bigger. Hi. Hi, baby. He loves you, too. He is so cute. Good girl. So you can get different size goats based on your needs, which is nice. Um, you can get any size you need, which I think is awesome because sometimes you want something small, sometimes you want something big. They're curious, friendly, intelligent, and they're endlessly entertaining. Who hasn't sat around and watched goat videos on YouTube endlessly? I know I do. <laughs> so, 
the basic history, and I'm not going to give you an entire rundown. Thank you, chicken. I'm not going to give you an entire rundown of what might or might not have happened in the past with goats. I'll just give you very basics. So about, about 8,000 BCE, so before Common Era, in the highlands of what is now Western Iran, it wasn't then, but back then it was what would become Western Iran, goats were first domesticated. Uh, they were eaten before that. Okay, so they were hunted and eaten well before that, like 40,000 years before that, according to archaeologists. At least that's what they think. Hi, sweet pea. You eating some grass? This is Shadow Fox. He's so bum. <laughs> he doesn't like it when I call him a bum, so he leaves. Anyway, <laughs> not the point. So, um, goats were eaten about 4,000 years before that. But it wasn't until what is now Western Iran that they were domesticated. Okay, it took a while. This is my Arwen. That bucket's empty. If you want water, you go to the other one. Yeah, you do. Oh, there's Shadow Facts. There's your puppies. Sorry, I was just looking out the window because there's puppies. All right, never mind that. <laughs> this video is going to be heavily edited because there's a lot going on that I'm uh, distracted by. So there's going to be a lot going on. So yes, this video will be heavily edited at some point. That that one's empty. You've got to drink out of the other one. It doesn't matter how long you stare at that one. I want you to drink out of the other bucket. The other bucket. No, you're stupid. Okay, fine. She's not stupid. She's just stubborn. Goats are stubborn. You should know that. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> domesticating goats along with domesticating certain cereal grains actually allowed people from go for, to go from hunter-gatherer to nomadic herders and tillers of the soil. So goats and the cereal grains that were domesticated around the same time changed the way people existed, basically. Hi, I see you again. You're spying. So yeah, changed the way people existed. Um, early domesticated goats were endlessly use useful. Um, you could get milk from them. You could eat them. So you could, they've got their meat. Fiber, you could turn their, their fiber from their wool. You could turn their skins into leather. And frankly, sometimes they were even sacrificed to the gods, which we don't do that anymore. But, you know, that used to be what they did. So goats had a lot of different uses. Um, they could carry belongings, and they were really easy to look after because mostly they look after themselves. They follow you around and eat grass. Uh, they were able to survive in many different climates where horses and cattle couldn't really survive. And they were really good in arid, dry, or even tropical areas, areas that were really mountainous. She wants in there to eat the chicken food. It's not going to happen. You can stand there all day. I'm going to stand here and just film you all day. You're not going in there. It's not going to happen. Anyway, <laughs> they ended up being called the poor man's cow because you can get most of the same things from them that you can from cows. You're just going to stand there until that gate opens. You can't go under. We built that so you couldn't get in there. You chubby monkey. You're so pony. Hi. Right. So they were common throughout the world eventually. Sometimes they'd escape, and that's why we today, look at the horse, but that's why we today have groups of feral goats around the world. Different areas of Scotland, Wales, Ireland. There are feral groups of goats because they would escape occasionally and go make their own groups. Someone's going to say, is there something wrong with her? No, she's mad that I won't open this dang gate. Get away from the gate. We are not opening this gate. It's not happening, Missy. There's chicken. You do not need to get in that bucket. It's full of water. Don't get in that bucket. You don't go in the goat, the chicken area. Hi, chickens. What are you complaining about? Nothing. Okay, fine. So in addition to escaping and making themselves wild, because that's what they did, they also made really great companions because of the amount of things we could get from them. Oh, there's the pony. Hi. <laughs> Hi, buddy. This isn't about you, though. This is about her. Yes, of course. Don't fall. Anyway, not the point, not the point, not the point. Okay, finish this. So, um, 
eventually when people decided to leave their areas wherever they were that one's empty you have to drink on the other one yeah that one but eventually what would happen is um now we're spilling it good good job but wherever people went, they took their goats with them. So when European settlers moved from Europe to North America and South America, they took goats with them because it made sense. They're small, easy to look after, easy to have on the ship, and it's a ready source of food. While people were sailing around the Americas, if there was an uninhabited island, they would often drop off breeding groups of goats so that on their journeys around, there'd be a ready source of food. It made sense to them. Um, goats, goats went everywhere that people went. So that's why you now find goats everywhere. Everywhere that people are, there are goats. Different breeds, maybe different sizes, but goats are everywhere because we took them everywhere we went. Um, goats went westward with settlers across the Americas because they would really just follow the caravans. I mean, you're not going in there. Look, all the chickens are coming out. You still can't go in. But the goats went westward with the caravans Mostly because it wasn't difficult to keep them. They would just eat the grasses and stuff along the way. They were quite happy about it. And they would take care of themselves until you were ready to use them as food. So that's just the way it went. I'll give you some rubs, honey. Aww. Look how fluffy they... This isn't, this isn't even winter yet. This is mid-fall for us. And look at how fluffy she already is. Yeah, these guys get pretty dense winter coats. And she's not even a fiber breed, but she's got... Really, you're not going in there. She's waiting till I open it to go look after the chickens and she wants to slip in. Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen. <laughs> anyway, so they basically took looked after themselves. Most of them were just a generic goat. They weren't a uh, purebred anything, really. Hi, sweetie. But they were not a purebred anything. They were just generic goats. It wasn't until really the late 1800s that purebred goats first got imported to North America. And that, those were the mostly the Angoras and the Fainters. Most breeds didn't show up in North America till the 1900s, some as late as the 1990s. So it really is kind of a weird thing where... Goats were around, but we didn't do this purebred thing. We go scratch. We didn't do this purebred thing until fairly recently. So, are you stiff? She's a fainter. Her muscles stiffen. She's okay. I'm going to lie down. You're going to lie down until I open that. Okay. Yeah, sometimes people wonder if fainters are okay. Big yawn. Sometimes people wonder if fainters are okay when they do that thing with their... Uh, their legs where they can't really, they can't move them. They get really stiff. That's a normal fainting goat thing. Look in your lips. That is a normal fainting goat thing. Very, very common. Okay. Very common. It's part of their breed trait. So when you see her like that, there's nothing wrong with her. That's really normal. Anyway. <laughs> so it's kind of weird with goats that we have these goats that we've domesticated for tens of thousands, for 10,000 years. But purebreds really didn't make an appearance until fairly recently. That is kind of weird, but it's just kind of the way it was. We were really concerned with purebred goats until the last hundred years or so, or so mostly because they were a source of food, milk, fiber, and, and leather. They weren't used for anything other than that. They weren't really pets until recently, so nobody really cared. These days, there's lots of purebreds. We will talk about different types of goats and different breeds of goats, in a different video, but I just want to give you a very basic rundown, and I'm going to heavily edit this video because I have been all over the place looking at the horse, looking at the dogs. I'm going to edit a lot of that out. So if you don't see the horse or the dogs, or you see very little of the horse and the dogs, it's because I edited them out. <laughs> anyway, she's fine. Chickens are fine, even though the chicken just fell down a ramp. You okay? It's fine. Chickens. Yeah, chickens. But yes, so it's really interesting that they haven't had purebreds for very long just because it's not something humans were interested in until recently. And everyone wondering if she's okay. She is. She's fine. Because <laughs> someone is going to ask, well, is that normal that her leg locked up? Yes, she's a fainter. 
Fainters do that. Other breeds of goats tend not to unless they have that myotonic gene. She does, she is pure fainter and she's actually an extreme fainter. So she has that gene and she has it in excess. She uh, locks up all the time. It's fun. Anyway, that is about it for us here today at Anderson Acres. We will talk about the different uses or different types of goats next time. We will continue filming Arwen and giving some basic information about goats. We'll see you tomorrow.